Rhonda Sampson, she's an enrolled member of the Yakima tribe and she uh, remembers Salilo Falls, so I'm going to go ahead and ask her a few questions about Salilo. The first question, can you describe Salilo Falls before the flood? I sure can. Uh, I was sharing with somebody the other day about when we lived there and you walked down to the actual falls that you could, I can still feel the mist, M-I-S-T, the mist mm -hmm. of the falls. <clears throat> and it was really cool because they were, they were roaring. It was just a real... When I think back about it, it's just really wonderful of what we had. And there was a cable car, and I was talking to Carol about it too. We'd get in this, uh, it was like a box thing, and you'd pull it like this and go across, right across the falls <laughs> from one side to the other. <clears throat> and I remember that all of the, uh, the fishermen, they'd always be tied up with the rope on scaffolds. There was no real boats down there. And then it was all scaffold fishing and dip netting. So that's it. I remember a lot about Salilo, the fishing part, which we lost. <clears throat> the second question about how old was you when they flooded Salilo Falls? <clears throat> we moved there when I was five, and I lived there when I was six, seven, eight, nine. And then uh, one night my mother and father came home from a meeting, and my mother was just crying. I can remember her cry. It was just a deep, deep cry. and. Uh, we didn't know what was going on, and the next day she told us kids that it was big enough that uh, the Army Corps of Engineers was going to take the, the falls, the, the area, and flood it, and it would be no more. <clears throat> and then we didn't know what was going to happen because that was our home. We had lived there for a long time, and we didn't know what was going to happen. And, and she said that we were going to be moving, and it was just like a shock because you know, the fishing was our life, it was our livelihood. The so, way of life. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not only for us, but all the families that lived there. The third question, um, what are your personal thoughts about Salilo? Well, it's kind of sensitive because when we were there, like all, all of the families, it was like in clusters and like our uncle and aunt lived right next door to us. And all the kids, we all lived together, we all played together and there was a closeness. It was a village, it actually was a fishing village. And there was two sets of railroad tracks. The upper one was up above the, by the hill <clears throat> and we were down lower next to the river. And, uh, and it was kind of crazy because the rail, uh, the trains would just come zipping through there. You know, mm -hmm. you just kind of, but we were just kind of used to it, I guess. Uh, none of us ever got run over, but it, it was uh, it was a certain type of closeness that we don't have anymore. And everybody kind of looked out for one another and, and really uh, genuinely cared. There was no uh, violence there. <clears throat> There was no alcohol there. I don't think very many smoked. There was no uh, no problems. It was peaceful. That's what I remember. <clears throat> and the fourth question: If you could shorten up the story about Salilo Falls, what would it be? <clears throat> when I was uh, a child there, it was good because we had our mother and our father. We was a family intact. There was our mother and father and six of us kids and the two youngest ones were born there pat gowdy and anna gowdy hill and so we had lived there for quite a while and uh what i liked was that uh i remember the we had no running water we had a hollow in jugs we had an outdoor toilet we had um you know it was real uh well, right now you'd probably call the place that we lived in like a shack. But we had cardboard on the inside, like, you know, to keep it warm. And then if there was holes, then they would stuff it up, I think, probably with catalogs. And But yet the closeness and the tightness that we had as a family is what I treasure now. Okay, and the fifth question, if you, <clears throat> if your parents or grandparents, whom you were living with at the time, were they ever promised any housing or property from the government? <clears throat> Our grandfather was a fisherman down there, our mother's uh, father, and, and our father was a fisherman and his brothers, his family, and it come on down into 
my brothers, they all fished there. But uh, when they were having meetings about the place, what was going to happen to it, yes, there was funds that was given to people if they could prove that they had lived there X amount of time. I don't know how long. Yes, they were given homes. Uh, they weren't uh, a lot of, I mean, they weren't very expensive places, but they were given places here on the reservation. <clears throat> and there there was funds that was set aside, they called it the Dallas Dam funds. And all the members of our tribe, as far as I know, we did get something I remember uh, we could draw out of it when I was in high school, but not a lot, you know, a couple hundred a year. It wasn't a lot, if I remember correctly, but we did get compensated, but how much it it could never compare to what we'd actually, I feel like law is, the word is lost. We were, it was taken from us. We didn't have much say. And uh, <clears throat> they had a lot of um, cultural people, I'll call them then, that was uh, Chief Tommy Thompson and his wife Flora. But they were just uh, quite elderly, and I don't really know if they really understood what was going to happen when I think about it. I think that they were just kind of like maybe bombarded and bang, it was, it was flooded. And you go down there now, it's just, the falls is just underwater. It's just gone. But it, it was a way of life, just, you know, it was our way of life. And I loved it. I, I talked to my family about it and what we used to do. And I always think about how we all ran. We could just really run and we never had shoes. We could really swim. Everybody was, you know, we just really did sw a lot of swimming. So that's, that was a real uh, good chapter in my life. And then we moved back over here to Tom our family. <clears throat> and uh, it, it was just kind of uh, not good after that. The family problems and things, we just kind of kind of never did get back into the, that closeness that we had down there. <clears throat> so that's about what I remember. Uh, um, I just feel bad at times that um, that, that happened. I do. Because it would have taken care of all of us. There's almost 11,000 Yakos now. We would have been able to provide. Everybody would have been able to go down there and fish. Everybody. That was what we were able to do. Not only the Yakos, but other tribes. And now it's, it's uh, just certain people that can go fishing because they got the boats and motors and stuff. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then it's it's kind of not not the way that it was intended to be. It was supposed to be to provide living a livelihood for us. So mm -hmm. that's what I remember. I was there quite a while ago. <laughs> 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 I'll be glad.